Um, who did you have at three? I think this is kind of – we all have – the me and you have the same – big three guys, but I think our rankings and where we have them is going to be drastic. Cause I think these guys are a little bit notch ahead of everyone else. I agree with you. I think that we talked about how close it is between like four through seven, four through six, mm-hmm. all of that. I think these three are cut above the rest of the running backs yeah. in the NFL. I think they're the three best by far. And so at number three, this, it took a lot of deliberation for me. I kind of have a set number one, so two and three was really hard. But I have Christian McCaffrey at number Mm -hmm. three. And it it sounds like a knock, right, because he's so incredible. I mean, he had a 1,000,000 season. That's amazing. Whenever he plays, he dominates. He's actually underrated, I would say, as an in-between-the-tackles runner. When he first came into the NFL, that wasn't really his forte, but he's a way better in between the tackles runner than he's given credit for. He's like, he's a legitimately excellent in being yeah. in between the tackles runner. He's better than uh, Saquon Barkley by a considerable amount in between the tackles. In my opinion, he's obviously a phenomenal receiver. He's essentially a slot receiver. He's incredible in the screen game. He's an unbelievable running back and having him number three, it, it feels a little sacrilegious, but I think what really got me is that it's, it's a little bit more recency bias too just because he was hurt last year. And the two guys at the top had just unbelievable, unbelievable seasons. I mean, one of the guys had like an MVP season, basically. So that's why I have Christian McCaffrey three. I know he's probably going to be higher on your list just by listening to you talk about this, how much you're valuing the receiving element. But obviously an incredible player. Definitely. Yeah, so I do have him a little higher. And... I'm with you on saying this guy's three because I think most people have this guy one. And for me, number three is Derrick Henry. Um, And it's mainly due to the receiving aspect and the fact that he goes off the field on third downs. Like he's just like not present if it's like third and 10. And for me, that's where I'm like, okay, if you're the best of the best, like I don't even think you should come. Like there should be a point in the time where like, you know, you're not even coming off the field. You can just play every down. You know, obviously that's a very idealistic way of thinking because players get injured and you don't want them to get too many touches and all that. But that's my logic there. I think pure running, he's probably the best. I, I really do. Um, you know, being with the Titans, their offense is just pretty much just built around him getting, you know, 25, 30 carries a game. I think he had like 380 carries or something crazy like that last year. It was like 60 more than the next guy, which was Cook. So the fact that he can handle such a big workload and actually take on that many carries is ridiculous. Um, And I think open field, it's uh, really tough to just even bring him down. But my thing with him is he has to get started because if he just keeps getting hit in the backfield, like he doesn't have that just, I guess, maybe agility. Cause he runs kind of upright. So that's where I say, okay, I would rather have a more nimble guy than him. But if you have him at number one or two, like I, I can't really like debate you too hard on it because I completely understand. And I think if there was a guy that you wanted on your team that you just wanted to feature your offense, give him thirty carries a game and win that way, like you couldn't ask for someone better than Derrick Henry. But for me, you know, if he does get shut down in the run game, what can he do in the pass game? And the answer is really not much. So that's where I have a hard time with him, um, and why I have him lower than the others.